Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Edelstein here with another installment of Rabbi E in 3, brought to you by Moor Washington, D.C. Our website is MERDC.com. Have a look and learn about all of our programs. Inspiration is wonderful. When we feel inspired, when we feel connected, enlightened, whether in a Jewish sense or in, in other ways, it's, it's great. But day in and day out, let's admit, we're not always feeling inspired. Judaism teaches that inspiration can certainly be the foundation of our service of God, but it has to lead, I would say, to dedication. Inspiration has to lead to dedication. The feeling of being inspired of how wonderful life is should lead to some dedicated commitment to a pathway that will build on that inspiration. Does that make sense? Inspiration is great, but it's got to lead to action and dedication. That's a fundamental pillar of the Torah and of Judaism in many ways. We see it in this week's Torah portion, Bishalach. The Jewish people experience the splitting of the sea. The Egyptian armies have pursued them, and it looked hopeless, and they, God said to tell, Mo, Mo, to tell Moses to tell the Jewish people to go forward, and I'll save them, and we did in an incredible act of dedication and self-sacrifice, and the sea split. And the Egyptian armies followed us in. We crossed over to dry land. They were destroyed. And the Jewish people then sang an ecstatic song, a prophetic utterance of their belief and faith in God called the Shirat Hayam. We say it every day in prayers. And it expressed their utter clarity that God runs the world, that he loves the Jewish people, that he took care of them, that he saved them. That was the height of inspiration in almost in history. At Mount Sinai was another instance of great inspiration that's coming up in the Torah portion. But... The next day, the, the, the song of the sea was gone. So, inspiration, but what are you left with? Ah, there's a famous verse in the song that shows inspiration's got to go to dedication. There's a verse that says, Ze'eli, the Anvehu, or that's part of a verse. This is my God, Ze'eli. There was such a clarity of the divine presence and divine purpose that it was as if each Jewish person could point to God and say, this is my God. That's the height of inspiration. But the next word is the key, vi'anvehu, and I will what? That word has many meanings. Rashi, the great commentator, brings two main ones. I'll add a third one from the sages. It shows that you've got to take the inspiration and build something out of it. No pun intended, because the first, it says, this is my God. The first meaning of Vian Vehu is I will build a habitation for him. Sorry, that refers to the temple. They prophetically knew they wanted to one day build a sanctuary, a temple, a physical structure where you could recapture the inspiration of connecting to God on a daily basis. That's one meaning of Vian Vehu. Another meaning is this is my God and I will beautify him. Referring to the fact they were saying when we do God's will and his commandments, we want to do it in a beautiful way, in a special way. Not just, you know, get the job done, but do it beautifully. That's translating inspiration again into dedication, a dedication to serve God with love. And there's a beautiful thing, the word vi vehu can be read as ani vahu, I and he. In other words, they're saying this is my God and I want to be like him. I want my life to be a reflection of godliness and of God's attributes. So you're taking inspiration, this is my God, and making it real concrete and into dedication, either the meaning of making a temple or doing God's will beautifully or making myself into a beautiful person reflecting godliness. Inspiration to dedication, have an inspiring Shabbos, and then, you know, make a plan to dedicate yourself to some project of goodwill or mitzvot and make inspiration lead to dedication. Good Shabbos.